Hey, what's going on dudes and dudettes, and I am finally back with a really cool build from the folks from Bendai, and that's none other than the Master Grape Hat Labor Shinohara AV98 Ingram 2. And without further ado, let's get to it. So, three weeks have passed, and this sucker finally came to the mail, and I'm super stoked. Why? Because Pat Labor is one of those rare mech animes that not many people know about. I would highly recommend you guys check out the actual TV series and the OVA and a handful of movies, not counting the live action one because I heard that did really bad in Japan. So, what's in the box? So, the moment you open up the manual, you get a brief introduction of what the Pat Labor series is all about, as well as an introduction on the two gimmicks that makes this kit really unique, which is the popping out cartridge area that pops out the revolver, as well as LED lights. A handful of stickers if you want to apply on there, as well as some decal stickers and, oddly enough, dry transfers. And I'll get into that, how to put those guys on later in the video. Another thing that's really cool about this kit, it comes with additional screws, so you're going to have to actually do some hard labor of fastening parts together like the old-fashioned way. Another handful of rubber tubing for the arms and knees so you can get that nice flexibility and a handful of action poses. Red parts, they're going to be used primarily for the red lights. A handful of clear pieces, which you're going to have to do some custom weathering. And, oddly enough, the shotgun is white. So we're going to have to do some custom weathering and painting with that as well. And in this box... Come on! Okay, whew! Alright, in this box, in a suspiciously black bag, houses the LED unit that's going to be used for the Pat Labor itself. I have never seen anything like this at all. It's really new and awe and shocking, but man, these guys really knew their stuff back in the early 90s. And now for the roll call. We're going to use our good old friend Surface Primer Gray for all the remaining white pieces, as well as black, and our good old friend TS-38 Gunmetal, as well as TS-48 Gunship Gray. You know, something a little different. Surface Primer White is optional. For the blue pieces, we're going to use Ocean Gray 2, as well as Red Brown for the shotgun holster. For additional effects for weathering and tubing effects, we're going to use rubber black as well as chrome silver to add additional effects. It works. Black is going to be used for the pre shadow as well as white going to be the base coat for the white pieces. A clear orange for the clear pieces as well as an old Gundam marker for the Gundam eyes. I'll go into explaining what I'm going to use it for. As well as our classic panel lining black and panel lining brown. And this time around, we're not going to use a flat coat for Model Masters. No, 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 no. We're going to try something really cool and bold. In fact, it's going to be semi-gloss clear, which is like a combination between glossy and flat. I hope this thing works out really well. But before we do anything else, any crazy, we got to get the pilot painted. So let's get started.
So at the last minute when I was about to apply the gun the marker onto the green ears, I started to notice that this is not the clear green that I was hoping it was going to be. So I kind of goofed on that. Sorry about that. But there's a neat little trick. As long as you don't shake up the pen, you can use the residue onto the actual clear surface, let it sit for about an hour, and then clean it off with a uh, rubbing alcohol works beautifully but if you want to go the easier route just get yourself a green sharpie marker and that'll do it just fine Boy, oh boy, now this is a treat. I haven't done a dry transfer on a kit since like three years ago. So the process of this is very, very simple. All you need to do is cut the pieces out to a specific size, apply them onto the surface where it's face down onto the surface that you have to rub the actual uh, decals onto the surface, give it a nice little rub. Wait, that sounded completely wrong. Apply some pressure onto the surface so that way you can actually get it right. After it's said and done, peel off the plastic surface and voila, instantly done. Sounds relatively simple, right? But if you do it wrong, you're gonna start experiencing the lettering will tend to flake if you don't apply it onto the surface correctly. So when you do this, don't rush it, take your time and it'll come out just perfect. So once you've successfully applied all the stickers as well as the dry transfers and completed all the appreciated pieces, it's time to hit all those remaining pieces with that semi-gloss like I mentioned before. And this stuff looks really good.
Well, dudes and dudettes, we are finally done, and this kit was a blast from the past. I recently built the Pat Labor from the live action movie a couple years back. Thought it was pretty cool, but nothing beats a nice, classic, smooth, and organic style that you get with this baby. And it was really, really neat. Now, granted, I did not add the additional visor as well as additional mouth to this in ground because. It looked it silly, and plus you have to add, a, add additional painting to the pieces, which will either look really cool or look really bad. So I opted out to remove it, and I'm happy with, with that decision. So let's dove to the nitty gritty about the goods and the bads in the kit. So right off the bat, bad. I hate to say it, but man, the articulation on this kit really sucks. Um, you can't bend the arm no more than like maybe three degrees. You can't do any like really crazy action poses because it was designed at a time that really worked. So that's pretty much it. However, Cool thing about this kit has a really cool functioning LED lights on the shoulder pads, which, wow, awesome. Was not expecting that from the kit at all. It was literally a surprise when I purchased it. But if you use a couple of things lying around and you want to do some creative action poses, yeah, you can let your imagination go wild. Now the second gimmick on this kit, which I have to admit, it's pretty cool, gives you like a nice like Robocop vibe, is a nice little section on the cab where it ejects a revolver gun for the pad labor. I think it's really cool. It has a nice little gimmick where it sinks it back in and it pops right out. The third gimmick, which is the reason why I didn't mention it, it's nothing really fancy. It just extends the arm out. It's something that you would notice in the TV series when the Pat Labor is reaching for the revolver. So putting those gimmicks aside, the big question is, is this worth purchasing? I'm gonna immediately say yes, but at the same time, I wanna say no. So let me get the no part out of the way. This kit is not for everyone, but at the same time, if you like robots, this definitely is worth purchasing. This kit does not have a lot of crazy articulation, but if you have some things lined around, you can use your imagination and amplify it in a weird way. And I guess the biggest selling point of this kit is the, its lights, personally. Maybe the revolver cartridge that sticks out. But for me, it's that nostalgic vibe that I immediately get when I look at this Pat Labor. It just oozes with 90s and 80s charisma. But hey, what do you expect? I'm an 80s lover. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for the new subscribers. And thank you so much for watching this 15 minute video. I try to do my best with it. And as always, if you guys like this and you want to see more, please hit that bell, hit that like, and I will see you on the next video. Later.